Welcome to Richmond Events Podcast, Leaders in the Industry, where we sit together with top-notch leaders discussing important topics in the HR, IT, marketing, finance, and healthcare industry. Today's topic will be mainly about marketing. For this, we have invited Dr. Markus Rach, who will be one of our industry session speakers at the upcoming Richmond Marketing Forum in June. And we will talk about the future in marketing. Sit back and enjoy. So, Marcus, welcome to our Richmond Events podcast. It's a pleasure for us to have you. Thanks for having me. Marcus, you are a marketing scientist in Switzerland, Belgium, and China. Please tell us a little bit more. How did you enter the marketing industry and what continuously inspires you to keep working in this field? It's <laughs> a good question to start. Um, I got into marketing in 2000, I believe, eight. Um, Before that, I've had sort of like the classical trail of business school, management consulting, strategy, and then at some point moving to the business side and, and within the business side, staying on the strategic end of organizations. And as life um, had it, um, one of the projects I did and worked on in 2007 eight had to deal with organizational alignment, as in which support functions within the organization are in alignment with the organizational organizational goal and objectives. And you would, of course, think most of them are, but it turned out not all were necessarily, and the marketing function was one of them that wasn't necessarily aligned. Um, so my suggestion was at the time that we should actually restructure marketing, which is a nicer word, you know, a nicer way to describe to change things up, right? Um, so we restructured marketing and because I was the one screaming, um, I was the one, the one being asked if I would want to lead that restructuring. And you can't really say no if you report to the CEO. It's kind of like this, hey, do you want to do it? And like, not really, but I have to say yes. So, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll restructure marketing. And we build up strategic marketing. We restructured global marketing and I transformed, transformed my first marketing department from a cost center into a profit center. Um, and that was my beginning in, in the world of marketing. That was my beginning of hearing that marketing is all about the funny pictures and the spending of that budget. That that, that was all the beginning of whole, the whole story, essentially. Um, yeah, that's how I got in. And uh, and once you're in, you kind of stay. I think I'm the Darth Vader of marketing. I'm the, I'm the one who doesn't like all the ads and all that sort of stuff. And I... I I tried to get that return on marketing back in, in into the eyes of marketing leaders. And that's what kept me to this point. And that's also what drove me to academia. Very interesting. All right. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about what will come next. Uh, what do you see in the future of marketing? <clears throat> well, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a lot in the future of marketing. And if I, if I truly knew... I guess we wouldn't have this podcast anymore. I would be on. I wouldn't be on a vacation in Bali or Dubai. I think I would just have a vacation in Dubai or Bali. Um, but in my opinion, the future of marketing is highly, highly dynamic, more dynamic than it's ever been. Um, marketing is a dynamic function. It, it, it's influxed by technology. It's influxed by change in society and by many other things in the external environment. Um, But in that influx has increased exponentially over the last couple of years, mainly driven by changes in technologies. You know, think of the smartphone. 30 years ago, um, I say when when our parents bought us the first bicycle, um, they 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 didn't Google, right? um, I guess. So they they went to a store, and that store was probably within a certain vicinity of where we live. and that's where you got your first bicycle from. And and we were quite happy, I am, to the most part. And now if you look for a bicycle, we don't just go to the next store. We Google for a bicycle, right? But we don't just Google anymore. We use our phone. And once you take up that phone and you type in bicycle, you know what happens. That bicycle is going to haunt you until you finally buy one. And depending on who, you know, stops retargeting, you might actually get haunted for much, much longer than the first purchase. So that's sort of like the influx of technology on, on that function and, And that has increased, as I said, exponentially over the last couple of years. And this is expected to continue. So we'll see technology change and shape 
the brand to marketplace interaction, which is usually what I talk about. It's, um, I, I define marketing as the management of the brand to marketplace interaction, which is a, an incredibly simple concept as such. But that interaction is being impacted by all these factors I just mentioned. And I believe in the future, marketing leaders and the function of marketing has to be more aware of, 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 of all of that influx and find a way to cope with new tech and new trends as experiments, as in, hey, what does this mean for organization? Oh, look, the metaverse. Um, do we need to open a store now in the metaverse or is it the doom of you know, the end of the world? Well, we had Second Life and we saw what happened to the stores in Second Life. And essentially, nobody went there. Um, and it became sort of like hookers and cocaine, excuse me for using the word, but that's what Second Life ended up to be, right? Um, why should the metaverse now be different? Because it's called the metaverse and not Second Life. What does it mean for the brand? I think these are the central questions that marketing, the marketing function, marketing leaders need to raise and need to deal with and find a way to cope with that increasing dy dy dynamic environment um, while staying true to the cores of what their function is, which is providing value to the organization. It's not just, you know, keeping the marketplace happy. It's about getting essentially that cash in, right? That's what we do. The part is getting paid by selling products or services, not by getting likes on LinkedIn, not by having a huge following on TikTok. I mean, let's be honest, who gives a shit? Um, there's all the brands flocking to TikTok. It's like, oh, we have 1.4 billion followers. Good for you. Good for you. Still, nobody buys a car through TikTok, right? Doesn't happen. What's the point, right? Show me the relation of your actions to the return in the business. This is the causality that needs to be built up. This is marketing accountability, which needs to be the driving force, in my opinion, um, to keep marketing aligned, as I said, with organizational objectives moving forward in that highly, highly dynamic marketplace. Excuse um, me, yeah. that language. It's yeah. My <laughs> wife always says I shouldn't do that, but I can't help it. It just comes out. Oh, that's fine. So, yeah, thank you uh, for the outlook from your point of view. Um, what are your plans in the new free t future? Do you have special project coming up <coughs> that you are allowed to tell us about? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in the near future, my, my plan um, is to move to China, to Shenzhen. So um, my family and I will, will relocate to China um, in the next couple of months. Um, oh. Which seems like an interesting venture, considering you know the lockdowns we currently see in Shanghai and all this sort of stuff. So it's kind of like probably the most exciting time to say, yeah, let's cross the border and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I've I've been offered a uh, professorship at a university in China, which which is rather exciting to me, um, considering the pace, considering the development. Uh, we talk about technology, mm -hmm. um, and we talk about the the first country that nobody would have ever expected to lead regulation of algorithms. And that's what we currently see in China. It's the first country to actually say, is big tech doing us a favor or not? And I'm not going into politics for obvious reasons, but um, I think these are questions that are obviously enticing to me um, that get me heated up and, and that makes me say, That's interesting because why does nobody here raise that question? Well, you know, we see millions and millions of teens being depressed on Instagram. Um, it's kind of like weapons of mass destructions on our phone. We know it. We have proof of it. I've done research on it, but we just don't want to talk about it. Um, there's probably obvious reasons, I would assume. Uh, one being our politicians use social media for, you know, elections running campaigns. So you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you, do you? Um, but big tech has shown they have power beyond anything we could ever dream of. Um, or I'm pretty sure no, none of the listeners here could have ever imagined that you could silence a president of the United States on the global stage. Like him or not, but that's a big deal, isn't it? It is. So at first, uh, congratulations for the opportunity to, to move to Shenzhen. Um, good for us, for the Richmond Marketing Forum. 
to to have you uh, in in two months at the end of June, the Richmond Marketing Forum. So sure. before you will move to Shenzhen, so that's great for us. Um, what tips could you give us regarding marketing and how to stay relevant? Well, I, I think to stay relevant, um, marketing leaders or those those being interested in marketing would have to find ways to look through the hype and through the clutter of media. Um, it's as I said before. Looking at the function as in managing the brand to marketplace interaction, it's about recognizing, seeing, discovering trends that will impact the relevant space for your very brand, um, that impact the interaction for your very brand. And it will be of essence to find a way to cope with that complexity, to be able to identify, to be able to value, and to then select the trends, the impacts, the technologies that truly matter for your brand, as it is highly likely for pretty much every brand in the world, apart from a few, of course, um, you know, the apples and whatnot. It really doesn't matter what they do. They have just so much cash. It just doesn't matter. Um, but for pretty much everybody else, it matters what they do with the resources. So the resource-based view of the firm actually still has meaning today. What do you do with the resources you have? And if you drive growth with that resource, with, you know, a sprinkle of luck and a good hint and, and whatnot, you're probably on a good way. And that's, uh, I think that's what marketing leaders should be doing and should be looking for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And of course, they should build a personal brand on LinkedIn. It's the utmost essence of everything, as you know. For sure. For sure. So, um, Markus, could you give us a small teaser into your topic at the Richmond Marketing Forum. The topic will be the future of marketing, what brands must know to remain relevant in the age of algorithmic disruption. Absolutely love to. Um, I think we'll, we'll start that session with the very question, has marketing lost the plot? I think that's a very good question to ask. And that's a very good question um, to look at some of the things that marketers currently do, where marketing spending goes to, um, and what marketing celebrates. I, there's a very famous car brand um, headquartered around Stuttgart. I'm, of course, not naming them, but it's sort of like the star of the automotive industry. And they celebrated themselves last year for being the influencer marketing leader. Great stuff. Great stuff. Their business objective is to sell cars, not to be the leader of influence, the marketing. And that's, I think that's a question to start with. So what, what, what's, what's currently happening in marketing? Have we lost the plot? From there, we move on um, into that influx of technology to the marketing function and how we could exploit that technology. And what does it mean to engage with our customers and with the market? We talk about engagement, we talk about segmentation, something that, of course, everybody likes. And I, I might actually ask how the brands being present segment the market. And I know the segmentation methods. It's usually part of my exam, so I'm, I'm well versed in that stuff. Mm -hmm. From there, we move on and, and, and question if that segmentation still makes a lot of sense, if we shouldn't have behavioral segmentation using technology that's on our hands, that's being used against us on algorithmic-driven platforms, And then question how we could use algorithms for our advantage as a brand. And um, that's gonna, I think that's going to be quite exciting. We might also dive a bit into um, some freaky stuff like avatars. You know, we got to touch the avatars and what, why it might make sense to have a virtual influencer versus a real one. Um, what that provides in algorithmic commerce algorithmic selection and um, algorithmic marketing to action. So it's uh, it sounds very fancy, but it's actually super simple. It's all about just getting you connected to the customer. And we question the way we've done it before, the way we currently do it, and if there's a better way to do it in the future. Unless, of course, big tech takes over completely and that's the end of the world. Hope not. <laughs> Hope not, yes. So, yeah, that's uh, quite a lot of uh, content, interesting content. So for the participants, a lot to take out and with them. So, uh, yeah, Markus, thank you very much for your time and for sharing some insights. It was very nice to have you with us. And, yeah, we really look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks at Richmond Marketing Forum and to learning more from your deep knowledge. 
All right. Thanks very much. I'm also looking forward to having, uh, I think, great discussions and, and, and hearing what current marketing leaders are up to.